Hi and welcome back to Fred in the Shed and in this video we're going to be looking at this RH770 dual band telescopic antenna. Now originally I believe these were made by Diamond who come up with the idea and like everything else um, these have been mass produced now in China and these have been completely cloned. It's, it, again it's really difficult unless you buy from a reputable radio supply sort of shop over the counter it's really difficult not to get a cloned antenna. This one is a clone I bought this a few years ago and I think I overpaid for this because I believe I paid something just under £20 for this at the time. This is all over the internet now. I've, I've just been on today and looked at prices for these cloned antennas. Amazon for one of these, typically anything from 10 to 15 pounds, and it gets good reviews. eBay, even less if you order from China, eight UK pounds to 12 UK pounds. That's less, obviously. I did in look dollars. to see if Diamond still make the original antenna because it is a good antenna. But they seem to have superseded this one now. They are now doing a model called the SRH770S. That's slightly different in the respect that it's not a expandable telescopic antenna. The top section unscrews, and that's how you convert it between the 70 SEMs and the two meter bands. They're expensive, you know, an original, original antenna, typically probably anything from 35 to 50 pounds. That's, that's going beyond what you want to put on a UV5R, but obviously if you're a ham and you're into the sort of 70 centimeter, two meter band, that's probably where you want to go. I also noticed that Nagoya, Nagoya also making one of these as well. Um, again, seems discounted in the American Although sort of market. it's a clone antenna, the advantage of this one is that it's, it's perfectly tunable because you can ex expand it and contract it. Um, so as long as there's no shorts in the antenna, it's supposed to be center loaded. This is supposed to be a coil. And I'm not gonna take this apart because I, I use this antenna and I don't wanna ruin it. But yeah, it's supposed to be center loaded. Whether that's fake or not, I don't know. But I say because it is tunable, I mean, it claims to be quite, well, ma a massively sort of wide-banded antenna. I did measure this one. This is 21 centimetres at its shortest length, and this one goes up to 92 centimetres fully extended. Some go, I think, about 85 to 90, something like that. Now, they're claiming that it is so wide-banded, it will cover from anything from 80 to 900 meters. As far as gain, of course, it's a long, large antenna, so you should get gain. On 144 megs, they claim an increase of two decibels, and at 440 megs, they claim as much as four decibel. I'm, I'm, I haven't really got a field test meter to sort of test that, but it does well, make sense. It is. In this video, I'm going to be connecting it up to the nano data VNA, and I just want to sort of check that the SWR is acceptable. In theory, you should be able to tune it right down to an SWR of one to one, but I just want to make, don't want to make sure it's an SWR of four or five or something like that. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to boot up the uh, VNA there and give it a test and find out how good or bad it is. Here we are, hopefully. That's in focus, I think it is. And I'll try and keep the reflections down. So this is just with the antenna completely collapsed. And I've set this on 445, which is nearest I can get to 446. And of course, obviously you can see it's all over the place. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna extend the top section as was recommended. And that's, and that's really what I've been using all the time that I've used it. So that's the top section completely extended and straight away we've got an SWR there at 1.38 so I think that advice that I originally got was pretty good now what I'm going to do and then when I touch the antenna it's uh, going to upset everything but I'm going to just extend the bottom section about a centimeter here we go pull my hand away well there you go and that's taken SWR 1.09 at 4.45 so that's pretty, that's pretty good, that's just one to one as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, it seems that the advice that I got was, was okay, was quite correct, if you can see that. So that's literally fully extended there on the top section and I've just done about a centimetre, maybe a centimetre, a half. Just gotta remember to do that. And SWR, yeah, straight away, straight down, pretty much one to one sort you of spot. You can tune it in. Two other frequencies, of course, just by, I mean, if I just pull the length up here, if I set it to its maximum length, 
I zoom in a little bit for you. There we go. I mean, now it's resonant on all sorts of frequencies. <laughs> you can, you know, it's going right down here. That it's all over the place. It's at 360 megs. If I go down, so we can go down to 145, get close to 145. So fully extended, yeah, there you go. That's how it should be. So this is what again I recommended. If you fully extended it and 145 megahertz there, SWR 1217. So yeah, it depends on what you use. If you use on two meter or the 70 centimeter band, but 446 just being that little bit sort of higher. But it is a large antenna once it's fully extended. I'm going to zoom out again. I mean, you've got to, you know, you've got to be prepared to walk about with this thing. It's certainly almost like a base station. So and tell me, call this a stop now on, on testing these. I mean, I've only really been testing these small little two, two meters, 70 centimeters antennas just to get an idea how to use the meter. Of course, I want to make dipole antennas. Um, it's chucking down in rain today. It's not exactly a good day to go out in the garden, but that's what I'm going to be sort of doing in the future. I did say, on another video that I would do, just on this 771, I would do an FM test, because these have got the broadcast band, just to see if it does improve the reception on, on FM, so maybe you could use this as a receiving antenna in a home base situation, um, just be a bit careful TXing on it due to the high SWR, but yeah, I'll probably do that. What I'll do is, um, I'll do that on a FRED2 video, because it's not really a FRED1 video, and that will probably be already up on FRED, Fred in the Shed 2, so by the time you get to see this, the guys that subscribe to FRED2, you've got the heads up. But I will leave a little pop-up at the end to that video, and I'll leave it in the description. If you want to go away and see how this, the old 771, see how it receives on FM, does it improve and outperform the standard little Bofong antenna. I think it probably will, but uh, we'll have to see. But there you go, that's it for this rather nice uh, 770 telescopic antenna. Certainly recommend this one. It's just, just a little bit heavy, a little bit bulky. But there you go, quick video. So cheers, thank you very much for watching. Please, please, please stay safe. And of course, I'll catch you all on the next one. Cheers now.